Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. This is magic. <laughs> Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Science is the study of how the natural world works. This is science. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. You ready, bad boy? Here we go. Da, da, da. Ready? <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Da, 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 da. Are you ready? <laughs> I win again. I am a winner. I am a winner. Wanna play again? All right. Bring it on. Here we go. <laughs> I win. I win again. <laughs> you wanna play again? Okay, yeah, me too. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play again. <laughs> Woo, I went again. Wanna play again? Okay, fine. I went again. Hey, man. You bored? Yeah. Me too. Wish I had somebody better to play rock, paper, scissors with. Another person. I'll bet I could create a simple computer program to play against. Now, let me think about that for a second. Of course, the best tool for that is computational thinking. So, what is computational thinking? Computational thinking is a logical problem-solving process. It helps us look at problems differently than we normally would. If we specifically want to use a computer to solve our problem, there are a few things we need to do. We have to look at our problem and then solve it in a way that makes sense to the computer. Oh yeah! We have to organize and analyze the information we are given. We have to break our big problem down into smaller problems. We have to look for patterns in our problem that allow us to create solutions with algorithms. An algorithm is just a series of ordered steps that are used in a computer program. As we plan, it's easier if we try to represent information through things such as flowcharts, models, and simulations. Finally, as we come up with a solution for our problem, we try to make it as efficient as possible. That means we don't want the computer to do a lot of extra work, even though it probably won't complain. <laughs> Let's go ahead and break my rock, paper, scissors problem down into smaller problems. Hmm, I'm going to write a program so a computer character can play rock, paper, scissors with me. Here's what I think it needs to do. It needs to watch for me to tell it to play. Uh, well, uh, start. Computers don't really do anything on their own. There's always an event that starts a program. After it starts, the computer character needs to decide whether it wants to shoot rock, paper, or scissors. Then the computer character needs to say what it decided. Finally, the computer character needs to show what it decided. Now I need to look for patterns. Let's look at this to see if anything repeats. First, I tell it to start. Then the computer character makes a decision. Let's say the character decides it's going with rock. Then it says rock. Then it shows a rock. It decides, then it says, and then it shows. It does that no matter what it chooses. It's a pattern. Before I start to plan my program, I should say there are a bunch of different ways I could do it. This is just one of them. You might think of a different one. Okay, let's turn this plan into a flowchart. 
to make sure it's solid. A flowchart is simply a picture showing how the steps of a program go together. To begin, I have to tell the program to start. Next, the computer program will make its decision using a random number. That's either one, two, or three. That way, I don't know what it's going to pick. If the number is one, the computer character will say rock. Then the computer screen will show a rock. If the number is two, the character will say paper, and we will see a piece of paper. If the number is three, we'll hear and see scissors. Again, this picture you see on the screen is a type of flow chart. Okay, now I've got a plan, and I'm going to use it to write a computer program. Let's talk about coding or programming for a second. Earlier, I thought about solving my problem using regular language. I didn't actually write any code, but I did come up with a plan. This is called pseudocode. Pseudocode is written with language that almost anyone can read. When I talk about computer code, I'm talking about a language that computers can read and use. It might look like any of these examples. A computer program is a set of instructions that a computer can use to complete a task. Writing one is usually called programming or coding. My friend Josh is a producer at Epic Games. He tells me they use a form of block coding for their Epic game Fortnite. Just to let you know, this episode is about computational thinking. So the programming part is going to be pretty short. We'll dig into programming a lot deeper in a later episode. Oh, okay, yeah! so here we go. I'm going to start with what is called an event. An event does things like start a program. I'm going to start my program when the space bar is pressed. Then my program will select a random number, one, two, or three, to use as a variable. That's my computer's decision. I'll use a block of code for this. Now, I'm going to add three if then blocks. If this happens, then do that. Each if then block will look similar, but will allow the computer's choice to show. If the random number is one, we get rock. Two, we get paper. If it's three, we get scissors. Wait a minute, that's it? Yes, computer programs aren't always long and complicated. We've used computational thinking to solve this problem. We looked at our problem in a way that let us use a tool such as a computer to help solve it. Uh. We organized our steps, we found patterns, and used a flowchart to show our thinking. We found an efficient solution. We didn't ask the computer to do any extra work. Okay, I'm ready to play against my new rock, paper, scissors program. <laughs> All actions have consequences. A consequence is a result that follows something that you do or do not do. These results can be good or bad. Stay up late, past your bedtime. The consequence, you'll probably be tired and grumpy at school the next day. If you get mad and hit your friend, the consequence, you'll probably get in trouble because hitting is wrong. If you don't study for a test, there's a good chance the consequence will be a bad grade. If you had paused to think about any of these, you'd have seen the outcomes and you could have changed your behavior. Want good outcomes? Pause, predict, act. Before you act, pause. Ask yourself, what might be the outcome of my action? Predict the possible outcomes if you do or do not act. Then make a good choice. Actions have consequences. So make your life the best life possible. Funding provided by Jason Isbell and Amanda Shires, Lions HR, Northwest Alabama RCD, Keep Alabama Beautiful, 
Derek Thornton, Alabama Soil and Water Conservation Committee, and Lawrence County Soil and Water Conservation District. Steve Trash Science is available online at stevetrash.com.